they all get the same level of security, the same level of trust. We built one version. Now, I've lived in software world for the last 25 years. I can tell you it doesn't work that way, right? There'll be seven different versions. Every time you upgrade, you go through a year of testing. 98% of our customers don't even know when they wake up one day that we just upgraded them to the latest version. All of their customizations work exactly the way it's supposed to work in the previous version of the new version. So by benefit of our, our cloud-based model that we deliver, we, a customer, has access to that highest level of security and trust, which is what we built Salesforce 25 years back. So whether it's government, enterprise, data cloud unifies that disparate data, and then we pass it on to our various, we call it clouds, like Arundhati really said, cloud, don't think about it as AWS, Hyper, sorry, um, as your as infrastructure, the platforms that our customers use to engage, whether it's on sales, on service, on marketing, or whether it's to do B2C commerce, B2B commerce, all of these different will inherit that, right? And so the beauty is that once we harmonize the data and we have a view, we can then personalize it and we can create complex flows that can actually deliver very, very important capabilities and insights for our customers. Thanks. Data remains their own. It's not seen by us. It's not seen by other customers. And even if a customer wishes that within their um, organization, different uh, businesses keep their data separate, they will be kept separate. You're talking about government, you know, having their data in silos. It's not only government. Every organization has its data in silos. Imagine an organization which has its data in a data lake, which gets to the data lake, by the way, you know, with a time lag. Then they have the data sitting, say, in the mail system, which is not there in the data lake. They have their data sitting in the transaction system, which also may be migrating to the data lake, but with a lag. It might actually be real-time data. Like you saw the AI, uh, the um, uh, Air India example, where a person, where a customer is actually interacting. So that's real-time data. That's not there in your data lake as yet. So what actually we do is we draw the intelligence from all of it and make it available real time. Okay, That's the beauty of it. So real time you get, as I'm talking to Pyle as in that example, Pyle's entire profile will float up to me. Now if for instance you have a retailer, the retailer has a website, the retailer has shops. Now you go to the website, you look at a few items, put it in the cart, abandon the cart, and walk away. Okay, just you think you, you don't have time, or you're not too sure how it will fit, how it will look, you abandon it, you go away. Now the next time maybe you go to the shop, what happens is that as you're inquiring about whatever you want to buy, the person who's serving you gets to know that these are the things you saw and kept in your cart the last time you were around on your website, not in person. So then what happens is if they have those pieces in, in stock, they can say as you're finishing your purchase that we noticed that you had liked these things but you had not really made a decision on them. Can we showcase them to you and see whether you'd like them and take a decision on it? So thereby what happens is then you get around to actually looking at them, seeing whether the, that you really like them. So the sale that you had actually gone or the purchase that you had gone to make of one item can actually result in purchases of three items. Okay. That's how we try and improve getting